big step bar, underground methods, dive nachos, get the most. If anything about AI, you'll know about Claude 3.5 Sonic. It's got really Best good AI powered code editor is Cursor and Lemmy. Claude AI keeps on delivering. This is Cursor AI. Claude 3.5 Sonic. Cursor AI. Cloud 3. Cursor. Claude 3. You couldn't be more wrong about V0, Claude, and Cursor. So lately, social media has been flooded with hot takes claiming that these tools will kill web development, put software engineers out of jobs, and turn coding into child's play. But here's the thing, it's not that simple. Sure, these AI-powered tools are game changers. They're making software development more accessible than ever. And yes, you can use them to build some seriously impressive apps. We're talking about full-stack, enterprise-grade stuff, not just basic landing pages or using simple templates. But the idea that they'll replace the need for any technical skills or even technical folks. And that's where people have got it all wrong. Building something truly custom and robust still takes know-how. You need to understand the fundamentals of how web apps work. You need to know how to architect your code, handle edge cases, and optimize performance. And when things break, because they usually always do, you need to know how to troubleshoot. And that's where this video comes in. So today, we're going to walk you through building a real-world application from scratch using Claude, Cursor, and VO. But we're not just going to show you which buttons to click. We're going to dive into the whys and the hows behind each step. So along the way, here are a couple of things you'll learn. The core concepts of web development, the best practices for structuring your application, how to use AI to supercharge your workflow, common pitfalls and how you can avoid them. First, let's start with a crash course in web development. Let's break down the basics of web app development and define a few key terms that we'll be using throughout this tutorial. Every web app has two main components, one which is the front end. This is anything that the user can see, touch and interact with, like buttons, forms, text, images, etc. It's all the visible part of your app. And the second part is back end. This is everything behind the scenes that powers your application, like databases to store the data, servers to host the application and logic to make things happen when a user takes an action. You can't see it, but it's extremely important. And you need both for an app that actually does something. Since we're not coders, we'll need some help. And that's where these three tools come in. The first thing is Claude. This is an advanced AI model similar to ChatGPT, but more powerful when it comes to writing and visualizing code. Yes, it can even show you visually what your code would look like. More on how that works a little later. Second thing is Cursor. Cursor is an AI-powered code editor where you can actually build usable applications that can be published and used by anyone. Here, you can ask it for code, get help debugging, brainstorm ideas, and even generate whole applications without much guidance. And third is VO or V0. This is a tool from Vercel, which lets you visually design your front end. It shows you exactly how your app will look to users and even gives you the code needed to make it functional. So here's the thing, we're gonna be using another word a lot and that word is next.js. Simply put, next.js is everything we need for the front end, back end, and everything in between. Okay, enough theory for now. Let's build something real. We're thinking of making a to-do list app with a note-taking feature. And along with a timer and a feature where when you start one task, it hides the others so you can focus. Damn neat, right? And we'll do this in four simple steps. The first thing that we're gonna do is brainstorm with Claude to nail down the features. Second is we're gonna build the front end with VO. The third thing we're gonna do is have Claude walk us through the entire process. And last but not least, we're gonna use Cursor to bring it all together. Okay, we're gonna start with step one, which is brainstorming with Claude. Before writing any code, we need to map out exactly what our application is gonna do. And that's gonna comprise of first, what features will it have? Then how should the interface look? And what happens when a user clicks a button? Make sure you provide as much detail as you can about what you want to build. Use examples, use photos, wireframes, or even rough drawings to tell what exactly is in your head. Like for our app, here's what we're thinking. So I'm creating an app and these are my specifications. A clean, minimalist design similar to Notion, ability to add, complete, and delete tasks, a timer that starts when you click a task, and simple note-taking functionality. We'll tell all of this to Claude and let it work its magic, guiding us on how to proceed. Okay, this is awesome. You need to see how it made sense of everything. And not to worry, we'll attach a doc file with all of the prompts used here, especially for you. Now we're moving on to step two, building the front end with VO. With our master plan ready, it's time to make our app look awesome. Okay, so let's see what we've got. This is the prompt that Claude has given us to put into VO. It has user interface, task handling, time tracking, and note taking. Awesome. So now let's copy this and paste it in VO and let VO do its thing. And boom, we have a functional UI in seconds. 
This is a basic functional UI and it's nothing very fancy. Here's where the real teamwork with Claude begins. We're going to provide Claude with our VO generated front end code and specify a few things. First thing is, I'm not a programmer, so please explain everything thoroughly. Second is, I need step by step guidance. And third is, don't assume any prior knowledge, spell out even the most basic steps. So now Claude has come up with the steps that we need to follow. So first we have to set up our development environment by installing Node.js or Next.js. We've already installed Next.js and we have it running in our system. We've linked a video in the description so you can check it out if you have any doubt on how to install Next.js on your system. It's really, really easy. And as you guys know, we'll be using Cursor for that and not VS Code. So go ahead and install Cursor on your system as well. We already have it on ours and if you want, you can ask Claude on how to do it. Now, we have a place where we can write and run our code. Before anything else, let's check how Cursor looks. Alright, this is the center panel and this is where you'll write and edit your code files. This is the bottom panel. This bottom panel over here is the terminal. Here's where you'll enter commands, install packages, start your app, create files and so many more things. Okay, this is the right panel and you, here's where you're going to be chatting with the AI, asking questions, requesting code, debugging, etc. And finally, here's the left panel which shows your project's file structure. Now let's move on to step two. Here, Claude is asking us to create a project. So to do that, let's first open our command prompt and enter this command. This will create your folder and you can name it anything, but we've named it My Productivity App. And done, awesome, it shows success. Now the third step is where we have to navigate to that app. This is easy, simply copy the prompt Claude has given and paste it here when you're done. Now let's open cursor and put everything together. We're almost there. In the fourth step, Claude has asked to install some dependencies. So let's first open a new terminal. Now, let's just copy this prompt and paste it in the terminal and let's run it and see. Ah, uh, okay. So this is expected. Here's an error. So let's try it once more. Okay, still an error. Guys, I usually don't like errors, but this is nice because now I can show you how Cursor's AI fixes these situations. Let's just select the entire error message and click on Add to Chat. After this, once your error message shows in the chat box, all you have to do is type fix this in the chat box. And just like that, it resolves your issues and gives you a solution too. So now let's simply copy the command cursor AI gave us and try running it. <laughs> awesome, finally it worked. See guys, we're telling you this is really good. Okay, now let's see what's next. We have to create a file named page.tsx. After this is done, do you guys remember the code that Vio gave us? Yeah, so now we can finally use it and see it in action. Let's go back to Vio and copy the code and replace the code that might be there by default. Okay, there's some errors in the code again, so let's ask AI to fix them. Okay, so once you fix all of the errors, simply put a run command, which will give you a local host link. Okay, click on the link and you'll finally be able to see your application in action. Now there you have it, a minimalist basic to-do list app. Okay, let's see if it works. Let's try scheduling a meeting. Okay, ah, sorted, it works. Let's try adding some notes to this note-taking section. Awesome, this is done. Hey, not bad. I think this is pretty decent for someone who has no idea how to code. You can also give it more complex prompts and get better looking apps and websites. Now, here's a bonus section, debugging. If you see some errors, don't worry, it's normal. And it happens to the best too. So here are a few common issues and how you can resolve them. The first one is build fail. This means that your app couldn't start likely due to a code issue. Check the error message for clues and then ask Claude for guidance on fixing the specific problem. The second thing is incorrect file names or structure. Make sure all of your file names match with what Claude specified and that they're located in the right directories. Even small typos can be a huge problem later. Import and export issues. If Claude's instructions mention importing or exporting code between files, follow those steps precisely. And last is indentation problems. In many programming languages, indentation matters a lot. So make sure your code is indented exactly how Claude shows. If you don't want to dive in yourself, simply take a screenshot of the error message and ask Claude for help deciphering it. So once you get the updated code, you can simply ask Cursor's chat window to update the specific files with the new updated code you got. Eventually, after carefully following Claude's instructions, which may involve a few rounds of debugging, you should have a fully functional web application. And there you have it, folks, your crash course in AI-powered web development complete. With tools like Claude, Cursor, and Vio, you can go from I've got an idea to I've got an app without needing a CS degree. Obviously, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The more you build, the more you'll pick up about coding, best practices, and all that good stuff. But the basic process is always going to stay the same. First is plan your app. Second is make it look slick. Third is get step-by-step -step coding help from Claude. Fourth is put it all together in Cursor. And last but not least, fix bugs until it works. 
Hopefully, this showed you that coding is way more accessible than you thought, thanks to the people working at these big AI companies. So drop a comment and let us know what crazy app idea you're going to build first and make sure you subscribe to Builder Central for more such content. And a side note is we've recently crossed 20,000 subscribers on YouTube and we could not have done it without you guys. So thank you so much for helping us build this community and stay tuned for more such content. Make sure you hit the notification bell, make sure you subscribe, share this video with your friends and your family and stay tuned till the next one. And until then, keep building.